Good morning, my good students. This is Dr. Eddie Morgan at Clovis East High School, and we're about ready to finish our last lesson in Chapter 9 and finish our lesson on two-way frequency tables. Today, we're going to focus on conditional relative frequencies. But before we begin, let's do a quick review of what we learned in our last lesson. In our last lesson, we looked first at joint frequency and marginal frequency. In other words, we created a frequency table here. Remember, frequency just means the number of times. So this is my frequency table here. And this was the data. We, served, we surveyed 60 people, men and women, and asked them whether they preferred a action movie or a comedy woman, movie. And this was our totals. Now, joint frequency, when you see the word joint, just remember... That means there's two, two sets of data, okay? So in this case, a joint frequency is data from two categories. If I look at my table, you see the one circle in red, all of those have two data. For example, the 17, the 17 is there were 17 men who preferred action, all right? There were eight men who preferred comedy. They're joint frequencies because they have to do with action and comedy. When we talk about marginal frequencies, however, that's where the data is only in one category. So for example, over here again, notice the 30. The 30 is the total of all the people who preferred action, whether men or women. So what's in blue here, either the total of the column or the total of the row, those are my marginal frequencies. So that's just the joint frequency and the marginal frequency. Notice this, the marginal again, it's only dealing with one set of the data, all right? Total of a row or total of a column. Now, we also looked at what's called a relative frequency table. This is pretty simple. We're just going to take all of these and make them into a percentage of the total, okay? So in this case, the data is divided by the grand total. So we're going to take each of these numbers and divide it by 60, all right? So if I do that, in other words, if I take... If I take uh, 17, the ma male who prefer action, and I divide it by 60, I get 0 0.28. That means that 28% of the people that I surveyed were men who liked action. And again, I have a joint relative frequency, which is in red there. And I also have a marginal relative frequency. So the key there in each case is you just simply take whatever the number is. So like my action figures there, if I took 30, the marginal frequency for action movie, and I divide it by 60, I get 50%, which is exactly what I got there. All right. So you see, all you're doing in the second on the relative frequency table is taking the frequency table and dividing every number by the grand total. So that's what we did last week, I mean, or a couple of days ago. So today we're going to look at conditional relative, all right? So the new word here is conditional. We're not looking at joint relative or marginal, but we're looking at conditional. Condition means there's a condition, usually an if statement. If this is true, if this condition is true, then. And the way we do this, and we'll be more clear when we actually do it, is you're going to take the joint frequency, and you're going to divide that by the frequencies, either the row total or the column total. So what's different from a relative frequency here is instead of dividing it by the grand total, you're going to divide the joint frequency by either the column total or the row total, all right? So here's an example. The citizens of Parkdale were preparing to vote on a bond issue to fund an expansion of the public library. The records data about support for the bond issue is below, okay? So first thing, let's complete the table. This is the data they had uh, by age, 18 to 25, 25 to 64, and older. So you have your young people, your middle-aged people, and your old people. And they had, took a survey, do you support the bond or oppose the bond? So let's get our marginal frequencies first. So if I add these up, the total in support was 169. The total opposed was 132. And the total in the young of people that voted for it, 98. 102 and 101 and that added up to they had surveyed 301 people now if i want to know the conditional frequency relative frequency that a person surveyed supports the issue given and notice this word given 
the given is my condition. So given that a person is between 18 and 25, in other words, given that they're in this category, so all I'm doing is looking at that category, what's the relative frequency that they support? So here's what we're doing, because we're only looking at that, the number of people who support in that group is 79. The conditional is take that and divide it by the total of that column, because that's all we're looking at, okay? So 79 divided by 98 is 0.81. In other words, 81% of the young people support the bond to expand the library. That's what we're saying. If we're just looking at young people, 81% of them support the library. Okay. Now, if we go to the next one, notice the given here. What's the conditional relative frequency that a person supports it given that they're between 26 and 64? So again, how many supported it? 57. How many total in this group? 102. So in this group then, when we look at that frequency, 56% of the people supported it. Okay. So it's not in the middle age range, not as many people supported it as they did in the younger range percentage wise. All right. So let's go on to the next one here. Given that a person is over 65, again, that means what category are they in? They're in this box here. How many supported it? 33. How many total in that category? 101. So the number of people who supported it who were over 65 was 33%. So as we got senior citizens, only a third of them supported that. So what conclusions could you draw from that? Well, the major conclusion you draw is that the younger they were, the more likely they were to support the bond. The older they were, the more likely they were to oppose the bond. Okay, and what would that be from? Well, there's lots of reasons. If you're young, if you're in 18 to 25, you may be married, you have lots of little kids, and you're thinking, hey, I want libraries for my kids. And even as you get a little older, you still like them. And maybe when you get senior citizens, maybe you're thinking, well, I don't have kids, so I don't need libraries. Hard to say why, but at least we can draw the conclusion that the older they got, the less likely they were to support it. The younger they were, you had more support. Okay, so let's try a second problem. We took a survey of students who live in Clovis and asked them what flavor of ice cream do they prefer? And the table shows the data. So we just have the, the joint frequency data. You know, 32 is the number of junior high students who preferred vanilla. So let's first thing, let's fill in our marginal frequencies. So that we, we did 100 junior high students, 100 high school and 100 college. And as far as the totals, the total that preferred vanilla was 85, chocolate was 127, and strawberry was 88. And checking that out, both the row and the column add up to 300. So again, the conditional relative frequency takes the joint frequency and divides it either by the, the total of the column or the total of the row, depending on the condition. Key word here is condition. What's the given? So here's my given given that they were in junior high, okay? That means they're in this. So if you think about it, what I've put in blue there, that's all I care about. The rest of it, I don't care about, okay? So, you know, you can almost sit there and go, oh, okay, we're not even gonna look at this right now. We're just gonna look there. So what's the condition of relative frequency in that if, if a person's in junior high, that they prefer chocolate? Well, the number of chocolate is here and the total was 100. So if they were in junior high, the chances that they liked chocolate was 33 over 100, which means 33%. In other words, that's saying if you're talking to a junior high student, then the junior high student is likely that a third of the junior high students preferred chocolate. All right. Second one, what's the conditional relative frequency that a person surveyed prefers chocolate if they're in high school? In other words, given they're in high school. So let's just highlight the high school for a moment. And again, all I care about is the pink numbers now. So the number of people who preferred chocolate here was 41. And my total again, they were, we surveyed 100 students. So that meant the percentage, if, if they were a high school student, then the chances that they preferred chocolate was 41 over 100 or 41%. So as you moved up to high school, more kids preferred chocolate than they did when they were in junior high. All right. So you can see where this is going. 
Our next problem just says, given they were in college, okay? So if they're in college, then that means they're in the, the third column. And the number of people who preferred chocolate was 53. And the total number we surveyed in college was 100, all right? So now at this point, uh, if they're in college, the percentage that liked chocolate was 53%. So once again, uh, you can tell if you had to draw a conclusion from that, it appears that as students move from junior high to high school to college, as they get older, more students prefer chocolate than vanilla or strawberry. So there just tends to be a trend. And we all know our tastes change. There are things we liked when we were little that we don't like, and we're always trying new things that we thought we didn't like. But, so according to this data, uh, there was an increase in the number of people who preferred chocolate as they grew older. Now, so far we've been doing the condition or relative frequencies based upon the total of the column, but we can also do it from the row. We just did one, if you were in junior high, what was the relative frequency? If you were in high school, but what if we said, turn the question around. Now notice the given in E. What's the conditional relative frequency that a person surveyed is in junior high given that they prefer strawberry? In other words, now we're asking, hey, I meet somebody who prefers strawberry. What's the chances that they're in junior high? Okay, so a little bit different here. So notice my strawberry is a row now. They're, my total prefer, people that prefer strawberry was 88. How many of them were in junior high? 35. And so 35 divided by 88, that tells me that about 40%. So if I meet somebody who likes strawberry, there's a 40% chance that that person is in junior high. Okay, so see now, in other words, the relative frequency can be for a column, junior high, high school, or college, or it could be, in this case, the row by the flavor. Okay, so let's look at the next one. What's the condition of relative frequency that a person is in high school given that they, given that they prefer vanilla? So the number of vanilla is the pink row here. Total of 85 people like vanilla, and the people who were in high school here, 28 out of the 85, and so my conditional relative frequency would be 28 over 85, or about 33%. So if somebody says they like vanilla, it's kind of like about a third, a third, a third, you know, maybe, it may not be exactly that way, but it's about a third of the chances that that person's in high school, okay? And finally, let's say the given is that they prefer chocolate, all right? So chocolate is here. What's the relative frequency that they might be in college? So the number of college, 53 out of 127. So the conditional relative frequency is 53 over 127 or 42%. Which simply means if you meet somebody in the, who's in the survey and they say they prefer chocolate, there's a 42% chance that that person was in college. And so these relate different ways you can look at the data. Am I comparing them by junior high, high school, college, or am I comparing them by flower, by the um, flavor that they prefer? All right, so that takes care of it. That's the end of the lesson for uh, last lesson for chapter nine. Guys, have a great day. Keep well and keep safe.